Welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Kerry Stevenson, and today I'm going back to the science area, biotech. I'm talking with Dr. Mark Devlin. He's the Chief Scientific Officer for Amplia Therapeutics. ASX code is ATX. Mark's coming to us from Melbourne. He's newly freed, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, hundreds of days in isolation. He's been busy working on that with Amplia, but he's also a little bit more free. Mark, good to see you. Got a smile yeah. on your face? Good yeah. to see you, Kerry. <laughs> is it nice to be a little bit more free than you have been? Yeah, it is. I think it's, um, for most Melbournians, it's been a pretty uh, tough 12 months. So it's, it's very nice to have some additional freedoms, I think. You can go out and have dinner now and you can get a bit of sunlight. Fabulous. Exactly. Now, I wanted to talk to you today because Amplia Therapeutics have had a recent um, capital raise, quite quite substantial funds, but you've also done some an announcement to the market. But before we get into that, just give our listeners who may not know who you are a brief overview of Amplia Therapeutics because you I, I forgot to mention, you're also one of the founders. So, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mark Devlin has been there from the beginning. So, Mark, a brief overview of who are <coughs> Amplia Therapeutics. So, Amplia Therapeutics are a, a company that are developing small molecules in the oncology space. So, we're looking to treat cancer. We're also looking to treat fibrotic diseases. So, um, you know, this is built on some really good Australian science. These molecules have come out of basically a, a consortium originally of leading medical research institutes um, and some commercial partners. Um, they were taken on, bo- on board by Amplia in about 2016. So this is a really exciting time for the company where we're basically, this is the culmination of, um, you know, seven or eight uh, years of, of research and on the cusp of, of moving into clinical trials, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, well, on the cusp of, if we can just go back to the type of drugs in the area, because you mentioned a couple of words, fibrosis. Yep. What, 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 uh, what are the drugs treating? What type of diseases? So our lead molecule, our lead asset, is a compound called AMP945. So this is a, a molecule which inhibits a protein called focal adhesion kinase, or FAC. Um, FAC is very important in fibrotic processes, uh, whether that be lung fibrosis, which is one of our um, major interests at the moment, um, but also uh, other fibrotic diseases, things like um, uh, liver fibrosis uh, are also areas where we've got uh, potential interest. What's liver fibrosis? <clears throat> so it, it can So um, quite often uh, liver fibrosis can be uh, caused by metabolic diseases. So um, effectively it's a, a, a lifestyle issue in, in many oh. cases, but it can also be associated with... Um, with uh, diabetes, it can be associated with um, chronic alcohol consumption. It's a uh, it's a massive issue in uh, in developed countries, particularly. Um, but certainly, the the main focus in in terms of our uh, fibrosis research or our preclinical work has been around lung fibrosis. Um, and at the moment, uh, Amplia is really sort of gearing up to look at AMP nine four five. It's it's lead molecule in progressive lung fibrotic diseases. Um, starting from from next year. So, again, very exciting uh, point to be at. Is that a big market, lung fibrotic disease? I mean, you know, you hear about lung cancers and that sort of thing, but how, how you, you, you're going into this area, is it a very um, focused, smallish market or is it quite big? Just trying to get an idea of what your, where your drug will be used. So, so like lots of diseases, um, you know, uh, progressive lung fibrosis can be broken down into a few different buckets. So, Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is one area where we believe our, our lead molecule will be effective. Um, but there's also a number of other uh, sort of chronic fibrosing diseases of the lung um, that sort of fall outside of that IPF or idiop- idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis um, bucket, which we also think AMP945 will be quite useful for treating. So it's not an enormous market, but in terms of unmet medical need, um, right. The, the drugs that are really available for things like IPF currently, um, there's, there's two drugs that have been approved. Both of those drugs, um, uh, while, they're, while they're standard of care now, which means that most patients will be sort of given that therapy when they, when they get diagnosed, they're not, they're not overly effective. So we, we, okay. think, 
we think there's certainly room for improvement on current standards of care. Right. So how long, how long along the path have you got? Uh, how, how far along the path has Amplia Therapeutics got? Um, so this is a really exciting time for us. I mean, you know, one of the nice things about Amplia is we've worked with sort of leading uh, scientists, um, both in Australia and overseas, to really frame, you know, where, where we believe our drugs will be most effective in the clinic. Um, and we've done now the, health, the Healthy Volunteer Phase 1 trial, um, and we've, that's, that's been pretty exciting. That was completed uh, earlier this year. Um, and it basically tells us that our drug... Uh, is safe and tolerable at the doses that were administered in that healthy volunteer trial. Um, but more recently, that also the drug is hitting the target as it's been designed to do. And what I mean by that is that it's actually binding to the target protein FAC um, in the healthy volunteers and it's inhibiting that protein. And that's a really important uh, finding um, and gives us uh, much, um, much more confidence moving into the patient trials next year. Is it what you expected, Mark, or has it exceeded your expectations? Because not being a scientist myself yep. and my, my audience out there, you know, we're investors, we're looking for companies that, I guess, in your case, breakthrough technologies. Um, you said it was an exciting time. What I want to understand is, has this exceeded your expectations or were you expecting this? I think this is confirmed our best expectations. So we, we knew going into the Healthy Volunteer Phase 1 trial that AMP945 was a very selective drug, which means that it inhibits the, the protein of interest, FAC, but it doesn't really touch any other related protein. So from that, we were predicting that it would have a very good, very tolerable um, profile, and that was confirmed in the, uh, in the study. Um, but also the, the most recent supplementary data also tells us that um, or, or provides very strong evidence that once daily dosing of, of our compound, AMP945, and that's oral dosing, so yep. you know, very easy to do, inhibits the, the target in, in a manner which is um, related to dose. So I think that's quite often companies don't have that level of confidence moving from a phase one, for, from a phase one trial into a phase two. So for us, that was a really nice supplementary finding uh, that, as, as I say, gives us additional confidence moving into those patient trials next year. So let's go through what that process is. <clears throat> phase one, successful, bit of excitement around that. What does phase two look like? And are, are you funded for that? So Ampli has recently uh, completed a, a $12 million cap raise. And that really gives us, puts us in a very strong position to enter into um, particularly our, our pancreatic cancer trial starting uh, next year. Um, it's important to note that the, the approach that Amplia is taking is really to build on top of pancreatic cancer standard of care. Um, what does that mean? So standard of care for any disease is the best therapy which is currently available. Okay. So in, in the case of pancreatic cancer, uh, however, standard of care therapies um, still aren't enormously effective in a lot of patients. So the vast majority of patients that are diagnosed with, with pancreatic cancer will receive a combination of drugs uh, called gemcitabine and abraxane. So that's, that's effectively the standard of care therapy in most developed countries. What uh, Amplia is going to do in its clinical trial is not try and replace that standard of care. Um, it's really trying to build on top of it. So our approach will be to use our drug, AMP945, in combination with gemcitabine and abraxane as the standard of care agents. And the, the really compelling preclinical data we have with our drug is that by adding our drug to that standard of care, we should see better responses. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, and, you know, and pancreatic cancer, and I'm sure many of you out there do know, and I know from firsthand experience through a friend of mine, who, by the way, had a great result. We love her dearly. She's seven years in, so God bless her. She's got through it. But the majority don't have such a good outcome. So this is really, really important uh, that if you get a successful outcome, this is changing people's lives. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I think that the other advantage of the Amplier approach is that by adding to standard of care, we're, we're given the opportunity to treat patients when they're first diagnosed with disease. I think that for many cancer therapies, 
they quite often end up getting trialed in patients that have already failed a number of lines of therapy. Oh, um, okay, and, got and it. And as you can imagine, each time a, a patient fails a line of therapy, they're sort of moving down the list. Yeah. Whereas I think in, in Amplia's case, the design of the phase two clinical trial in pancreatic cancer allows us to treat patients um, on first line therapy in combination with standard of care. And I think that's that makes us quite uh, quite a different approach to many companies. Yeah, because what you're what you're saying to me is instead of waiting for this one to fail and that one to fail and this one to fail, and you know what, we're so far down the track, this is kind of like the last option. You're yeah. saying that with Amplia's drug, AMP945, it, it, that can be introduced right at the beginning. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. In, in patients that are receiving wow. uh, genocidoban and abraxane for the first time. Th- is that unusual? Not being scientific myself, is that unusual? It, it, it is quite unusual. Um, but, you know, the, the scientific evidence and all the preclinical work that we've done, um, as you may well be aware, and this has been obviously announced to the market, we, yeah. we do a lot of work with uh, the Garvin Institute and particularly uh, Professor Paul Timpson's group at the Garvin. Yep. So our clinical trial approach in pancreatic cancer has really been framed by a lot of good quality preclinical science that we've done uh, with Paul's group. So we're, we're confident based on that data that this approach of combining AMP945 with gemcitabin and abraxane um, has a, a real potential in, in pancreatic cancer patients to improve overall responses. Mark, as the founder, one of the founders of Amplia, what was it that you said, you know what, we can change people? What was it about this? Because there's a lot of drugs out there, there's a lot of biotech companies out there. I guess what I'm wanting to find out is, what was it that you saw that you thought, you know what, this could change lives and this could be extremely successful? Well, I think it's been a long journey with the the focal adhesion or FAC inhibitors. So certainly there there was some drugs around uh, maybe 10 or 12 years ago that were trialled as single agents. So uh, in the oncology setting, so single agent FAC inhibitors, not admittedly drugs that we don't think were as selective or as potent as our compound, but they were trialled in cancer um, sort of 10 or, 10 or so years ago as a single agent. They weren't particularly effective. Now, what we've done is really sort of build the, the preclinical science package by working with you know, world leaders in, in fact biology. And where we've arrived at is really this combination of geminobraxane, which you know, in terms of adopting and translating that to the clinic is is a much straighter path because those agents are already used in pancreatic cancer. But the science really points to improved outcomes, at least in preclinical models, when you combine a FAC inhibitor and AMP945 specifically, a lot of the work has been done with, with those two standard of care agents. So yeah, we're, we're moving into, into phase two trials with what we believe you know, is the support of world-class science. You mentioned the Garvin Institute a moment ago. Uh, what's that relationship? What are they doing with you? How does that work? So, so the Garvin have been a fantastic uh, partner to Amplia during its um, probably for the last two or so years now. Um, as I say, we've done a lot of work with Professor Timpson's group. Um, he's sort of really a specialist in, in uh, fact biology, but also fact biology as it relates to pancreatic cancer. So, you know, a lot of what companies need to do in that preclinical phase is build the body of evidence. Um, And I think, you know, Amplia has really spent um, a lot of time and effort, you know, trying to work with the very best people to make sure that when we design our clinical trial for pancreatic cancer, that it's based on the best science possible. And I think, you know, that the company is, has really put a lot of effort into that. What I'd like to know is we're coming up. I cannot believe it, Mark. We're coming up to Christmas Oh, my goodness, the Christmas trees are out. Everybody's going la, 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 whatever. Um, What can we expect in the next few months in terms of news flow? Because they're a catalyst in the biotech sector. You know, you list on the ASX. I said before, the ASX code, ladies and gentlemen, is ATX. But what people want to know is what are the, I guess, the markers, if you like, scientific term, there we go, Mark. Um, (laughs) What's the news flow? What are the markers? What can people be expecting in terms of news flow as we go into 2022? 
Well, I think um, you know, certainly one of the big big events coming up on our calendar is the, the start of the phase two clinical trial in pancreatic cancer patients. So I'd be encouraging your listeners to, to keep an eye out in sort of around quarter two next year for an announcement okay. um, around that. Um, obviously, you know, COVID timelines sort of shift up and down, but you know, that's that's really sort of our focus at the moment. Um, and, and after that, I think it's really, um, you know, there, there'll be an opportunity for the company to review the, the interim data from, from the, uh, the first uh, group of pancreatic cancer patients that are dosed um, with AMP 945 and standard of care. So it, it really is an exciting time for the company because, you know, as I mentioned before, this is sort of the really, really the culmination of a, of a decade's worth of work to bring us to this point where we, we finally have the opportunity to to see how our drug goes in, in the patient population that it's been designed to treat. And you're pretty excited about where it's going at the moment, as you say, uh, Q2 next year, that will be another announcement, which I guess is like um, another stepping stone uh, and especially giving some, uh, I guess, more um, sound base for you guys going forward. So for investors, I guess, um, more confidence that this is going to go forward. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, the, the, the trial design process is, is complicated, but we've got, you know, some fantastic clinical advisors on board. We've got some really good clinician researchers that we've been liaising with around, um, around uh, site selection. Um, so which, which uh, clinical trial centres will be involved in that trial. Um, and it's really now just sort of putting the finishing touches on, uh, on that design and, and, and really working towards maintaining timelines into 2022. Well, it's an exciting time for you guys. Um, we're running out of time, Mark. Here's what I want to do. You know what I'm like. Uh, we've, we spoke before. Um, it's an investor audience out there. What they're doing is they're looking for, okay, what are the reasons? And I always ask for three reasons, three reasons why investors should be sitting up and taking notice of what news flow you've got coming and what, what the catalyst might be for Amphia going forward. Yeah, sure. Look, so if I was to try and condense this down to, to, to three main points, it's really, I guess, the, the, the company, you know, is now on the cusp of phase two clinical trials. And for any biotech, that's an important, um, a p- important marker. We wouldn't be moving into phase two patient trials unless we were confident of the assets. But the second, right. the second point is, you know, really around the quality of the asset. There are some other FAC inhibitors that are in clinical trials at the moment. We believe our molecule is more selective, more potent, and is amenable to once daily dosing. So compliance is is really um, uh, assured. And I think you know the other thing to, to note is that you know Amplia has recently been successful in raising an additional twelve million or thereabouts for its uh, phase two clinical trial campaign. And I think again that sort of puts us in a really strong position um, moving into two thousand and twenty two. Well, I think it is, it is an exciting time. They don't need to go back to the market, ladies and gentlemen. And as Mark just said, phase two clinical trials, that's the next catalyst for these guys. They're well-funded. There's going to be lots of news flow, so make sure you put them on your watch, watch list. Dr Mark Devlin, founder and chief scientific officer, thank you so much for joining me on Small Caps today. Thanks very much, Kerry. It's been great to chat.